Well, I'm Benjamin Wilkie. Um, I'm 21 years old and I have struggled with a pain pill addiction for the past six years since I was 14 going on 15. Um, my parents are both dentists. Um, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer in 1999 and you know you know, it was a slow progression of watching her die over those, you know, eight years because she passed away in May of 2007. And when she passed away, you know, it kind of just like, she was the glue that held the family together and the family just kind of fell apart. And, you know, we had to go see psychiatrists and doctors and all these, you know, medical professionals to see, you know, seeking help. Uh, for depression and you know just trying to get psychologically you know get our minds back the way you know where we could go to day-to-day -day life without you know being completely miserable and you know I always got prescribed to two antidepressants and along with those two antidepressants was Alprazolam. Well Alprazolam is a fancy name for Xanax and you know that's where it started I'm 14 about be uh, 15. I turned 15 in September the 4th, on September the 4th, and you know, I didn't know what the stuff was. I didn't know what Xanax was until one of my siblings had told me, well, that's Xanax, man. You know, that was my older brother, and he said, you know, that stuff will get you messed up. And, you know, being young, trying to be cool and stuff like that, you know, we were like, I've got Xanax. I'm prescribed to it. You know, I don't, I don't have to search for it. And so, you know, I didn't really understand the gravity of what I was messing with. And, you know, there's two kind of withdrawals that can cause death, and that is alcohol withdrawals and benzo withdrawals. And benzos consist of anxiety medications such as Klonopin, Xanax, Valium, uh, so on and so forth. And so, you know, still didn't know really what I was messing with, young and ignorant and, you know, trying to... Oh, I was self-medicating myself, and it just progressively, I started with Xanax, and the next thing you know, I'm smoking pot, and then, you know, I think I did my first Vicodin pain pill when I was about, I was probably 15, you know, I went and rode, rode four wheelers with some friends, and there was an older guy there, and he was probably 10 years older than us at the time, probably about 25 or 26, and he said, Man, y'all should try one of these. These will make you have the ride of your life. And we just thought, well, I mean, I remember at first we we're like, no, we don't need that. We've got some beer and some weed and we'll be fine. And he said, no, I don't think you understand. This will make you have the time of your life. And we're like, well, we don't even want to pay for it. And he said, well, I'll give it to you for free. And so, you know, we did that. And lo and behold, we did have a good time. So good of a time that, you know, from then on out, we were thinking, well, we can have a good time or we can have a great time. And so, you know, progressively got worse and worse. And so then it got to the point to where I was eating Vicodin and Percets, Xanax along with that, as well as alcohol and marijuana. And, uh, you know, it just, people don't say that, you know, marijuana is a, a gateway drug, but in fact, you know, also in weed, I never thought for a second, you know, I never thought for a second I would, you know, experiment with you know acid and all these other kinds of hallucinogens and depressants and opiates and you know I, we just thought we were having fun so you know it just got worse and worse and you don't even realize how bad how bad you are until one day you wake up and you're going through withdrawals and I remember I guess I was 16 at the time and I was having really very severe acid reflux and at the time I'm just thinking well this is something that's going on with what I'm eating and this that and the other but it was the problem that I didn't want to face myself was that I was eating so many pain pills every day that it was killing my insides and you know I was eating about 20 to 25 Percocet 10 325s a day at that time and you know it was just destroying my liver my kidneys and especially my digestive tract because people don't realize how bad and the you know there are way many way more side effects than there are positive effects and uh, you know just I progressively kept on kept on so I remember I was having very bad uh, issues with my you know 
acid reflux in my stomach and not having an appetite. And I remember going to one of the guys that I used to get pills from and he said, I told him, I was like, yeah, man, I've just been hurting real bad. You know, my stomach's been bothering me. And he said, oh, I can tell you what you need to do. He said, it's all the Tylenol, the acetaminophen inside of those pills. He said, this is a Roxy Cotton 30 milligram. He said, they have no Tylenol in them. It's just pure oxycodone. And at this time, this is when Oxycontin was being taken off the market for the reasons of people were injecting them and smoking them and taking them and snorting them. And, you know, it was killing so many people. People were overdosing like crazy. And so I just remember thinking, I was like, yeah, that's, that's probably a good alternative. And so the next thing you know, he's like, here, I'll give you one for free. You know, let's hook you in. That's how they'll do it. They'll reel you in. And, you know, he knew that I had come from a nice family and that I had money and this, that, and the other. So he knew that he was baiting a, you know, he was going to make money off of that one loss of about $20 at the time. And so I did it and it was, you know, I have heard so many times people say, you know, I, about crack addicts, for instance, that, that wow, they're addicted not after the second smoke, but the first smoke. And I just remember thinking that's BS, you know. It, it, you know, you can't just do that, but, uh, you know, looking back on it, that first pain pill, that first Roxy, just ignited a fire that was going to take a long time to be extinguished. And, um, you know, I sit back and think about it, and yeah, I guess 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, so about five years, I was heavily you know, induced on oxycodone, 30 milligram peroxies, R's, you know, street names. Um, and, you know, it just progressively, my life started spiraling downhill, you know, my grades. And, you know, I got by the skin of my teeth so many times, you know, and uh, it's just, you know, I'm thankful for being alive this today, but, you know, I think I was 18 years old and that was the first time I was involved in, you know, got, well, that's the first time I was caught doing something illegal. And I remember I got charged and I went to jail about a month or so before I graduated at that time, even though, although I went back and finished and graduated, I just remember that was the first setback. And still I'm in denial. Everything's okay. I just messed up this one time. I just got caught. And so I went back, finished high school, you know, shortly thereafter I got out and, you know, still in my mind thinking, you know, I'm okay, I can, I can do this, I can handle this, I just let it get the best of me this one time, but it won't happen again. One thing is true for any drug addict, alcoholic, you will not quit no matter what. Anyone says, family, girls, whatever, you're not going to quit until you're ready. It doesn't matter what they say, it doesn't matter how many rehabs you go to, it doesn't matter this. If you have in your mind that you're ready to quit, you will quit. But if you know in your mind that you're not done with that little road, you know, you're not going to be done. And a lot of people say, well, you just got to wait until they hit rock bottom. And here's my outlook on this. There is no rock bottom. There is when you decide to quit digging. And, you know, that's that's true, true fact, you know, is when you're ready, to quit digging down in that pit and start climbing up. And some people say, well, it's too late. But you know, in reality, <clears throat> it's never too late. Um, You know, I've always enjoyed working. I know that sounds crazy, but uh, I grew up on a farm. As far back as I can remember, I've you know done work or been working. It's not something I'm afraid of. So what I really try to do now is occupy my complete time with, you know, if I'm not working, then I'm spending time with my family. And if I'm not doing one of those two things, I'm sleeping. And so, you know, that's, uh, that's for the time being, that's how I have to, you know, that's how I control myself. And, you know, I have a little systematic thing where I try to have accountability for all my, un, you know, the time, my free time. Mm -hmm. I try to be, you know, accountable for it because that's the times when you get yourself in, in some trouble. Right. And so that's what I, um, you know, I try to always be occupied. And for the future, uh, the sky's the limit, you know, and I truly believe that, you know, I might have a criminal record, but, you know, it's like I was talking to someone this past weekend and I said, you know, just because you have a criminal record doesn't mean you, it, you know, 
by the world's views it means you are a criminal, but that doesn't necessarily have to be what you want to be for the rest of your life. And so I've made mistakes, but you know, this is tr the truth. Every time I have ever gotten in trouble in the past six years, any anything, whether legal trouble or, you know, family or anything, I was hot every single, every single time. Every single time. So as long as I stay clear of that, you know, there's nothing that I can't do, and I truly believe that. And a lot of people, you know, I think I thought wanted to see, have still want to see me fail. And you know, like I said, that just gives me more uh, aspiration to do do what they think I can't do. And you know, I, I will be successful. And uh, you know, no one can change my mind about that. No one. I, you know, they can they can try. And they might, they might be successful for a couple of minutes at making, almost making me convince myself that I'm not, but at the end of the day, I know that I am.